So I've been getting a lot of people ask me to take a look at this new terminal application called Ghosty. And I've got to say, playing around with it for a few hours, I really like this terminal. So this is Ghosty and it's spelled G-H-O-S-T-T-Y because you got to have the T-T-Y as part of the name, right? Like with Alacrity and Kitty and now Ghosty. They've got to fit that T-T-Y in the name. But you know, this is a cross-platform terminal emulator that uses platform native UI and GPU acceleration. Now, this is a little bit misleading because cross-platform, you would assume, oh, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. But when you go to the download page, let's go to download, you can see, well, we've got a Mac OS build and we've got a Linux build, of course. Uh, nothing for Windows here. Now I should also mention that this thing just recently had like a 1.0 release so it's been like alpha beta for a while so it's just now really out in the wild for everybody to use and I think that's part of why Ghosty has been in the news a lot probably in a lot of Linux and open source software related media so people are are talking about it and I again I had some users ask me about it so I went ahead and grabbed the uh, Linux package of Ghosty. Now on Arch Linux all I needed to do was just install it from the repos because Ghosty is in the extra repos on Arch. And Ghosty is in some of the other uh, distributions repos. I, I believe uh, you can get it with Emerge on Gen 2. I believe it. You, you can get it with DNF on Fedora. Uh, I'm sure Debian probably has it on Ubuntu. You can install it via a snap package. There is a snap build of Ghosty out there. And of course, if you want to use snaps on any Linux distribution, obviously, you know, you can always install it via snap. So what are some of the notable features with Ghosty? Well, it supports multi-window tabs, splits, uh, it's got support for ligatures for those that need it. So it should have, you know, good, you know, Unicode character support, uh, get all your little weird glyphs and things like that. Also, it does have some GPU acceleration, so it should be fast. So for those of you that like the speed of terminals like Alacrity and Kitty, you know, Ghosty should be similar in terms of performance. And one of the things they mentioned was the native UI design. So what they're doing is depending on which platform they're building Ghosty for, they're building it with a toolkit that makes sense for that operating system. So the Linux version of Ghosty is GTK slash libadwaita. So it's going to have really good integration as far as, for example, if you're using this on the GNOME desktop environment, you know, uh, Ghost should fit right in on that. You should be able to do all of your changing of light mode and dark mode and things like that. You know, notifications should be integrated in the desktop environment, yada, yada, yada. So let me go ahead and show you Ghosty. So let me switch to a different workspace and launch Ghosty. So this is what it looks like out of the box. So again, it is a GTK application. You get a little toolbar here. So you get the little plus button, which as you can imagine, it is for tab so if I want a new tab, I can hit the plus button and now I've got the first tab and the second tab here. And of course, everything can be keyboard driven or mouse driven. So you can click on things or you can use the keyboard to switch between tabs. And it's very customizable. We're going to get into the configuration options here in just a second. Moving over on the toolbar, you have this little uh, grid icon. So this is kind of your multi window view. So if I click on it, it's almost like a, a dashboard for uh, like the GNOME desktop environment or, you know, some of those full screen dashboards that'll show you all your open windows. Windows, it's got that going on. So if I've got, you know, 10 different tabs, I just hit that little multi window icon and I get all 10 tabs. And if I want to choose one, I just pick the one I want. Or of course, I could hit escape on the keyboard to also just escape out of that and be back into where I was originally. There is a menu system here that has a few different options. For example, it's got some basic stuff like opening a new window, a new tab, or splitting right or down. So it doesn't have up or left, but you you can split up and lift if you want to create a config file you can add key bindings specifically to split in any direction you want to go but to split right I could just click split right here and I get a right split and if I go back into the menu split down I get a downward split and there are default key bindings for these I don't particularly like their key bindings because I don't think they make a lot of sense 
Shift Control O to split right. I, I would prefer something that was more Vim like. So if I'm splitting right, I want something involving the L key, which is the right motion <laughs> with Vim. Yeah, if I'm doing something down, I should do something with the J key, but they're using Shift Control E. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a lot of these key bindings here. I believe to uh, kill a, a window, it's Control D. Let's see if that actually works. Control D, Control D, yeah, so that killed all those splits there. But if I go back to the browser here on the Ghosty website, which is ghosty.org, they do have this configuration documentation, and it is pretty extensive. There is a ton of things you can do in a config. They give a little bit of an example of how a config file can be created and some of the options. Now, this here is an example of just, you know, setting five different things in a config file, but this there are a million different option references that you can set. So here in the sidebar, you can actually see there is a ton of things that you can set. So a lot of different values, a lot of different key bindings you can set. And I've played with this just a little bit because I really didn't like their default key bindings for common tasks such as splitting and you know, closing uh, frames and stuff like that. So here is what I ended up doing with my config. So let me cd into dot config slash ghosty and let me ls and I have config dot bac backup and what this is is I wanted to show you ghosty in its default form before I went ahead and showed you a basic configuration file so let me move config dot bac to just config and now let me reload the configuration and you can do the reload configuration from the menu system or you can do a key binding for that but let me reload you can see reloaded the configuration if there was any kind of error in your config file you're going to get an error message and let me show you my config file so i'm going to go ahead and open it with vim and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so this is just a very simple example obviously you can set colors uh, color values here in ghosty so you can see we've set background and foreground I believe these are the default values in ghosty anyway I just went ahead and duplicated them here in the config just as documentation but really what I wanted to change was splits so I changed my splits to be shift control HJKL depending on whether we're going left down up right so the standard vim motion keys i also changed the key binding to reload our config so if i make an edit and i want to do a quick reload a hot reload right i can do a shift control r for reload config i have font family equals nothing so by default ghosty defaults to using jetbrains mono i believe is the default font which looks fine to me i'm fine with that but if i wanted to change that value to something else i could change the font of course that is some of what I've done with the config so far. And let's show you those key bindings, those new key bindings in action. So if I do Control Shift L for a right split, you know, now I get a right split. Let me uh, zoom back out. And what's cool is the zooms only affect the one frame, right? So, you know, this frame over here did not get zoomed out. You know, you can actually manage them separately, which is really neat. Now I'm back over in this frame. If I want to do another right split, I can do Control Shift L. And now I've split this you know, in half. <laughs> that is uh, a little too scrunched up, especially with my ASCII art there, but that's fine. Control Shift J to split down. And if I want to kill those frames right remember control d is a default key binding of course i could change that if i wanted to but i'm fine with control d basically to delete you know these these frames that i no longer need so that is a little bit of the basics of ghosty really neat little application again it's just now 1.0 so the very first i guess official release you know non-beta release there could still be bugs of course i'm sure there probably are some bugs with this piece of software but it runs just fine of course we didn't actually see uh, me do anything as far as running any applications here in ghosty but as far as i can tell everything runs beautifully here and again i do like the splits i do like having tabs for those that want to play with tabs for me i would just deal with splits but if you prefer tabs you can certainly do tabs and splits you can combine 
align on both. And remember, you always have your little multi uh, window view here. You can actually see I still have tabs. I have a tab with those four splits and I forgot I had a tab over here with just the one window. So that is neat that you can mix and match. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tenrin, More Gentle, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Ghosty would not have been possible. Shows also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community, and if you like my work, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.